Welcome to this week's edition of the Bronco Weekly Sports Wrap. And we hope you all had a happy and safe Thanksgiving. I'm Denzel Johnson. And I'm Nikki Gilday. We had three sports in action last week with both our teams hitting the road and volleyball finishing regular season play. And Nikki, we start this episode with the Bronco volleyball team who received good news about the postseason this weekend. Volleyball received its 15th NCAA tournament bid in school history, 12th under current head coach John Wallace. This comes after beating St. Mary's 3-0 on senior day for the team's 22nd win of the season. Nikki, they also received good news with the WCC Conference Awards. That's right, Denzel. In all, the Broncos were garnered with 11 honors from the WCC between all conference and all academic teams. Sophomore Nikki Hess received first team all WCC honors, while Kirsten Mead was named freshman of the year. I Bronco caught up with the pair and Coach Wallace to talk about the conference honors. The next couple of days, we'll have 11 of our players um, honored by the WCC for both their on-court and off-court uh, successes. It's been a great honor for us as a staff to see our girls perform at a level, in terms of a high level of our conference, we're very proud of them. Um, I mean, it's a great honor. It's not something I ever expected coming in. Um, I didn't even know if I was going to be starting this year, and yeah, to be able to get freshman of the year, that's just, it's a great feeling. We can only really get better in the future. Um, having such a young team right now, as we get older, I think we'll just get even better. I follow NCAA Volleyball on Twitter, and they had posted some other conference um, awards, so I looked to see if ours were up on WCC, and they were. So the first time I saw was Kirsten's. I got really excited for her. Wasn't very surprised, but definitely proud. Then I saw um, mine, and then also all the other honorable mentions, so that was really awesome. We're all really pumped to go and play Oregon, but just having these awards in such a great conference gives us a lot of confidence in moving forward. Santa Clara will play number 13 Oregon tomorrow at 7 p.m. in Eugene. The winner will play either LSU or Oklahoma. So Denzel, both our teams were in some warm weather over Thanksgiving, traveling to Orlando and Mexico. How was the Orlando Classic for you guys? I think it was a great experience, especially with us being a young team. We didn't, uh, we didn't win as many games as we wanted to, but we won our last game, which is good. And guys starting to define their roles, which is very important, especially as we get closer to conference. I Bronco reporter David Gentili sat down with my teammate, Jared Brownridge, to talk about the games this past week. Denzel, Nikki, thank you. I'm David Gentili here with sophomore guard Jared Brownridge. The Broncos just finished up a 10-day road trip to Utah State, Michigan State, and then three games at the Orlando Classic. Jared, first of all, is it nice to be back after all that time on the road? Uh, it's really good to be back. I mean, we've never gone on a road trip that long before. So, I mean, it was fun to get to enjoy the experience, but just to get back in to your place where you live at just feels great in your own bed, especially. And a long road trip that consisted of some tough games as well. You're talking about Utah State, Michigan State, Tennessee, teams that typically compete and get to the NCAA tournament. What do you think is the importance of playing a tough road schedule early in the season? Well, I mean, you want to play those games because they're high major teams and there's uh, nothing special that you don't know about them. You know that they get to the tournament every year. So that's the kind of competition we're looking for. And if we do pull out one of those wins, then it looks good for us. And if we, if we don't pull out those wins, and it's still a good experience for our team, especially having a lot of freshmen and sophomores on the team. So I think going through this non-conference play, playing major teams will help us when we get into conference, being a lot stronger, a lot tougher, knowing what it's like to have to reach that tournament goal. At the end of that last game against Ryder, you had a play where you had a steal and a beautiful and one. Walk us through that play where you were able to convert the and one. Well, I was just in the right position on defense and I happened to get the deflection. So I got the steal. I ran down the court as fast as I could and I saw one of the defenders coming out of my blind side and I saw him getting ready to foul me. So I knew that I was gonna have to tense up and get ready to try to finish it. So he came across my body and I just went up. And it's one of those shots you practice like you're used to doing in the gym, but it's just, it never usually calls for you to actually do it when the game happens. So it was good for me to finally be able to do that. And I made the shot and all my teammates, they just started bumping me in and got me pumped up. And after that, I, I had no doubt that we were gonna win the game. Sophomore guard, Jared Brownridge, best of luck on the basketball court and in the classroom as the quarter comes to an end. Thank appreciate you. your time. I appreciate it, thank you. Denzel, Nikki, let's send it back to you. My team travels across town to take on San Jose State this Saturday at 7 p.m. to wrap up a six game road trip. Hope you can make it out. My team headed south for the Hardwood Tournament of Hope in Puerto Vallarta. We came away with a huge upset over LSU, really boosting our team's confidence. My teammates Beth Carlson and Marie Bertolt came in earlier to talk about the game. 
Thanks, Nikki. I'm here with my teammate, Beth Carlson. So, Beth, we just came from a big upset against LSU on the road. Um, can you talk a little bit about what contributed to that win? Yeah, I would say we executed our scout really well that the coaches prepared. We had to shut down a few key players. And we also came out from the beginning just really tough. We kind of, I don't want to say kicked them in the mouth, but I think we shocked them with our energy and stuff. And so we came out strong and were able to execute our plays. And Nikki and Sydney both came in and knocked down some key threes. So that led to our success. Definitely, I agree. Um, also, we have new coaches this year, obviously. Can you talk a little bit about what the biggest difference is that you see from last year to this year? Um, I mean, other than new plays and stuff, our energy difference is crazy. We're always cheering, running, meeting people off the bench. And it seems like a small component, but it really uh, builds momentum in the game. Yeah, definitely. Um, and lastly, we're headed on a big road game series. We're heading to Colorado tomorrow for two games, and then we face Oregon and Stanford before we head for Christmas break a little bit. What do you think we need to do to pre prepare for those two games? Um, we need to come out with confidence, obviously learn scouts, personnel, and just apply our fundamentals really well. Uh, make sure we know the plays and just come together, play as a team, and have confidence because we need to come out strong every game if we want to get success. Definitely. Thanks so much, Beth. Next up for us is the Air Force Classic in Colorado Springs. We take on the UC Davis Aggies on Friday and the host Falcons on Saturday. Both games tip at 3.30 Pacific. And that's going to do it for this week's edition of the Bronco Weekly Sports Wrap. Go Broncos! How about the, that initial drop on the rock and roller coaster? I thought I was going to die. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily I'm still alive. Associate Head Coach Aaron Mansfield has done a great job with this team going back to developing some routines back in January.